So today I would like to discuss with you this idea uh, that we have in our culture that sex needs to be exciting. Great sex is exciting sex. How do we make sex more exciting? Because that is the most important quality of sex. Now, I would like to tell you that this idea is very limiting. It leaves us in a very limited small version of sex. It actually uh, moves us away from fulfilling our true needs in sex and we will always be dissatisfied. And if anything, uh, in some cases, uh, this idea of always making sex exciting is going to be damaging and corrosive to sexual relationships. So we will never discover the true power, the true beauty of sex, the real powerful energy of sex, for as long as we are trying to make sex exciting. And we need to get rid of this idea. We need to do something entirely different, to go into a different state of mind about it. So that's what I'm going to tell you about today. So we all know that, you know, sex must be exciting and that is, you know, the most important quality of sex. When we have exciting sex, that's the best sex. Now, this is an idea that has been sold to you commercially. It is not necessarily the truth. And let me be clear, I'm not dissing uh, exciting sex, fun sex. It's great to have fun and exciting sex. All I'm saying is that this is one kind of sex. It is not an essential quality of sex. It is one of the possible qualities of sex. It is one of the kinds of sex in your spectrum. And it is not the most important kind of sex for your needs. It is not the most powerful kind of sex for your feelings, the fun and exciting sex. You can have it, but there is so much more that we can feel and that we need to discover for ourselves. So have you ever asked yourself, what role does sex have in your life? What function does it perform? What is it for you? So most people have adopted a certain model of sex from culture. They've absorbed it. And the proposition from our culture is that the role of sex in our lives is entertainment. It is an entertainment product. It is supposed to entertain you. Now, entertainment doesn't mean comedy. Uh, violent films are entertainment. Something really engaging, some kind of a game show is uh, entertainment. There's lots of different kinds of entertainment. It doesn't mean, you know, you're just laughing. So uh, the same happened in sex. We have invented all those glorified words like, you know, intensity and passion and pleasure and thrill and adventure. But all of them come under this umbrella of entertainment. What does that mean? You know, you have different states of mind about sex and this is encouraging the state of mind that wants to be enticed, wants to be engaged, wants to see something new, something flashy. So it is a constant process of reanimation of attention. When we are in that state of mind, we flick through Netflix, we scroll through social media, we are attracted by clickbait online. That is that state of mind. And we have been encouraged by our sex culture to put sex into that box. It is a thing that's supposed to give you some kind of enticement, entertainment, something novel, something flashy. So how did this happen? Well, there are dark forces at play. Uh, There are, without being too dramatic. So a very brief history of sex, very, very briefly. So sex was not allowed for thousands of years. Everybody was having it, but it was underground. Uh, You could go to hell for it and whatever. And then in the 50s, in the 60s, it was opened up again. It's okay to have sex now. It's natural. It's not a problem. You're not going to go to hell for it. Uh, you can have it. But at the same time, there is no serious attempt to you know, have a really serious conversation about it. Well, what do we want to do with it now? Because it's been not touched for thousands of years. Uh, where do we want to lead it? What do we want to do with it? What is the actual kind of well-being aspect of it? What is the uh, kind of positive way of having sex for us and our relationships and stuff? None of that conversation happens. And it's just left out there as a, okay, it's just a nice thing to enjoy for pleasure. So whatever it is that you want to do, go and explore. Whatever it is that you enjoy, enjoy it. Now, this would make total sense in a kind of utopian, anarchic society where everybody is in a completely independent, evolved individual, and they just make only their own decisions. But we don't live in that kind of society. We live in a market economy. So this thing was thrown out of prison uh, into the market economy, straight into the street, and left to fend for itself. And all the market forces went, are you kidding me? This is so juicy. This impulse, this strongest impulse that has moved people unconsciously forever, we can now do whatever we want and sell it whatever way we want. And there is no guidance, there is no direction, there is no conversation that smoking is bad for lungs. There is nothing like that. 
Uh, there is no regulation. We can just do whatever we want with it and tell whatever lies we want. So it got immediately commercialized and it got developed very, very quickly into a really heavy entertainment product with all the kind of the market uh, psychology at play tugging on all our most subconscious buying impulses. You know, and it's not a great conspiracy with some kind of elite in charge. We've all done this. This dark forces are our subconscious impulses. You know, it's a interaction it's a vicious cycle between the suppliers and the consumers that keeps feeding this suppliers escalate to attract consumers consumers buy into it and so it goes so it has all got packaged uh, as this entertainment product under the influence of the same forces that are used in you know how the makers click on things in facebook and how the media tries to attract our attention this is how it works and it has become so ingrained in us, in our practice of sex, that we are unable to see beyond this. And we are operating from that place a lot of the time in sex. So sex is this entertainment product that we are supposed to consume. And that happens in, in two dimensions. So there is the physical entertainment of sex. When we feel things in sex, we want them to be, to feel exciting physically. Uh, we are focusing, oh, this is a new sensation. This is a very intense sensation. This is the biggest orgasm. This is the better orgasm. Or what about this kind of orgasm that other people are having and not having yet? They're saying it's even more intense. And the media feed, feeds it all the time. So we are evaluating the feelings we have in sex, the physical feelings, by how impressive and how one up they are a lot of the time. Uh, rather than what is the actual kind of beauty and value and nourishment in it. And then obviously the psychological entertainment is a big part of that, how to make things new, more exciting, put something else on, something different, something transgressive, you know, some kind of you know, games and role play and all this. And uh, often uh, we even stop questioning why we're doing these things. Uh, what does it actually give us? Because the only thing we end up focusing on is how much it reanimates my attention for another five seconds or something and then the purpose is achieved so this feeling of you know novelty and excitement and entertainment obviously it's a part of life it's a part of the colors of life and we like to feel it but there's so much more that we want to feel we are not just that but sex has been put a whole culture is about that sex has been put into that box uh, it is just playing that role of entertainment. And what happens then is that it becomes quite imbalanced and often corrosive and uh, even neurotic in a lot of relationships. Because this attitude of only wanting excitement and fun out of sex is not just impoverishing. It is impoverishing, first of all, because there's a, there's a whole different of experiences you can have in sex. But if you believe that sex always needs to be exciting, then you always have exciting sex. Now, it might sound like a good thing to you, but actually what you're doing there is you have 10 different, okay, you've got really good at having you know different sorts of exciting sex. So you have a hundred different kinds of exciting sex, but there was actually a thousand kinds of sex and 900 of them were not you know, exciting. They had other really amazing qualities. But you have stayed in that part of the range that's only exciting. That's all you ever do. And then, you know, having fun and exciting and entertaining sex, it is nice in some way, but there's obviously uh, things lacking from it. You know, the deeper fulfillment, the deeper happiness, the uh, profoundly loving feeling, you know, other kinds of soulful beauty, other kinds of nourishment are missing from that. So those may be um, really important nutrients for you, for your relationship that you would like to feel out of sex, but you're actively avoiding them, unaware of that, because you're driving uh, it always into the exciting part. And you have that fun and exciting, and it is fun and exciting. But because it was fun and exciting, it couldn't be any other things, and you never get other things out of sex. And then there is that feeling of, you know, sex being hollow, and uh, something is always missing. So it's a small range of sex you have, and it's a limited life experience, but there's also kind of a bigger problem, a slightly darker problem there as well for a lot of people. Uh, we know that when we are so focused on just being engaged, being enticed uh, by something, and, you know, we kind of survive on that, then there is a problem with building tolerance. And then there is a problem with escalation. And then at which point, uh, not only does it not give you what you wanted out of sex, you, you even stopped questioning, what is it doing for me? You're only focusing on you know, how can I uh, get reanimated for one more moment. And obviously that's when sex a lot of the time stops making sense. And overall, it's just really difficult to stimulate such you know, intense excitement in your brain over a long term. So it becomes an unsustainable sex life, a very difficult sex life to maintain. It's very patchy.
And there is certain unverbalized discomfort I found that a lot of people feel when they, um, they are aware that their partner in sex essentially sees them as an entertainment object. You know, so we are supposed to entertain our partners. Now, in a kind of really well-balanced sex life, that can be fun. But when that is the only thing that is left, it can feel quite odd to us. We don't really want to be somebody's entertainment, you know, because you're not with your partner just for jokes. So the place of sex in our lives has become defined as entertainment, a product of entertainment. And look, you, you can do that. You can have sex as just entertainment and excitement and fun. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, you're never going to go to hell again for sex, whatever kind of sex you have. But it's just so misplaced. It's such a powerful, beautiful thing. There is so much more it is good for and there's so much more we need out of it. And we are basically using an iPhone to crack walnuts. And we desperately need the things that we um, can get out of sex. And they're really important to us for our well-being. They really affect our lives. But we can't reach them in this picture of exciting sex, only exciting sex. The real nature of sex in our lives, the real experience of sex, is nourishment. It is a nourishing energy on many different levels, in many different directions. It is nourishing you know, our body, our soul, our hearts. So this is the true place of sex in your life. That is the real role of sex in your life to nourish you. And when we put ourselves into that uh, place of looking for nourishment, we are in a completely different part of our minds, a much more conducive part of our minds to really experience amazing sex because now we are focusing on uh, what is actually really good and really valuable out of sex? How does it actually feed me? What is so beautiful about it right now? Not how it engages me or reanimates my attention, but what is the actual kind of real substance here that is so amazing for me? That is a completely different state of mind. I want you to think about all the things you do in your life that you love, that are important to you. Think of all the things in your life that are nourishing for you. I'm not going to give any examples because I don't want to you know, sound ridiculous. You know, some people are into one thing, other people are into another thing. But just think about it. Uh, there are lots of things in your life that you love, they're really meaningful to you. And they're really profoundly good for you and nourishing for you. But maybe you wouldn't think of them as, you know, exciting as such. You don't give them the quality of, you know, exciting, like real arousal about it and real kind of jumping up and down with excitement. There are some things like that in your life for sure. And you love them too. But there are, there's a bunch of other things that are beautiful and really important for you and really good for you in, uh, in other ways. So I want you to change this in sex. I want you to understand that excitement is not the most important quality of sex. It is an optional quality. Some sex is exciting. It is one of the qualities that sex can have. The most important quality of sex is that it is nourishing. The purpose of sex is not to entertain you. The purpose of sex is to nourish you in your life. It doesn't mean that we ban, you know, exciting and fun sex as you know, bad for you or illegal. You know, have exciting and fun sex when it happens, when you're in that mood. Um, that's totally fine. It's just we want a lot more. We want a greater spectrum. We want a greater range. We want to feed other parts of ourselves as well. There is a lot of sex that is just not exciting. And this is not, you know, it doesn't mean it's bad. It's not a criticism. It can be actually greater than exciting sex. It's just not a quality of sex in that moment. It might be nourishing you with love. It might be nourishing you with really amazing, beautiful energy without that sense of excitement. It might be really kind of revitalizing you and you are experiencing an altered state of consciousness that are incredibly profound. Definitely not exciting. Like Meditation is not exciting, but it's amazing. Um, it might be nourishing you with an incredible feeling of you know, intimacy and closeness and connection right now. You might be feeling some really profound energies flowing through your body. They're not exciting. They just feel really amazing. It can be nourishing you spiritually, energetically, emotionally. Uh, uh, nourishment is not tranquil or boring or really kind of just lying there cuddling. You can have very powerful, very passionate sex. Uh, you just experience it as uh, and nourishing for you right now. That is the quality of it that you feel. That is what you're focusing on, how it is enriching you rather than how it is you know, exciting your attention or holding your attention. It can be very erotic. It can be very sexy. It can be very powerful, but you are just really drinking all that in as nourishment, not uh, preoccupied with you know whether your attention is holding there or not. You know, when you have exciting sex, that's also nourishing. Uh, it's just nourishing in that particular way. It's nourishing the part of you that wants to be nourished with fun or excitement, but that's not the only part of you. There are other parts of you that want to be nourished with love and with intimacy, with connection, with different energies, spiritually and stuff. And exciting sex is nourishing that part of you right now. So even when you feel excitement, you can still feel it as nourishment. 
Focusing on sex as nourishment is not limiting. We don't cut anything out. We expand our range. It is expansive. There's just much more range and kinds of sex you can have. It's like if you imagine a pie chart of different kinds of sex you can have, maybe 10% of it will be exciting and the other 90% will be all the other kinds of sex. It's just really organic. It's really easy. It's, uh, you just flow with you know, what you need today. Then we stop driving sex always to that uh, part of the range where it has to be exciting. We stop always funneling it that way. And we just have so many more experiences. And those experiences are probably going to be more important for you, naturally, um, for your relationship than the exciting sex. Because is excitement really the most important thing that you want to feel with your partner? If you ask yourself, is that the most number one important thing that you want to feel in your relationship with your partner? Excitement. When we focus on sex being nourishment, we get a lot more out of sex in the moment. We start feeling more of that whole complexity, the beauty, that richness of the feeling. Uh, because a different part of our mind is focusing on how amazing this all feels and how it feeds you. And it's not just looking for something incredibly engaging. You know, we discover experiences that are much more impactful, much more enriching for us. The best sex is not the most exciting sex. This is what I teach in all my courses. The most powerful sex I teach is not exciting. It's based on completely different qualities, different feelings that you feel in that moment that are far more impactful for you. So this is the true place of sex in your life. That is the real role of sex in your life to nourish you. It is this force that nourishes you. It nourishes you with energies, with lots of different energies. It nourishes you with life, with love with connection. It nourishes your heart. It nourishes all your senses, your soul, your body. It nourishes your nervous system. It nourishes your well-being and your relationship, of course. It is just this incredible substance that nourishes you, but you need to become aware of it. You need to realize that that is what it's there for, and only then it can perform its function when you're actually going to tune into it as that. And I will say it again, don't worry that you will uh, have to now change from having sexy sex to some kind of meditative practice. Nourishing sex is super sexy. It is super beautiful. You can have such deep sexual and arousing feelings in nourishing sex, but even that apart, you can still have your fun and exciting sex. It's not going to disappear. You don't have to give up on anything. You just add in more things. I will actually cover this in uh, one of the episodes later that is called How to Live Sex as a Healthy, Balanced Diet and include everything in it. So for us to really experience sex as a nourishment in our life, to really discover that power, uh, it can't be just theory, it has to be practice in the moment. And that means that you have to bring this idea right there in that moment as you are feeling that sensation in sex, that you need to be listening uh, for nourishment in it and you need to be experiencing uh, that moment is nourishing and not uh, look for excitement in that moment. And this is a very important point because we have been conditioned, we have been educated, we have been structured sexually to look just for the excitement whenever we are feeling anything in sex. When your partner is touching you, there is an interpreter in our minds that is looking, is it exciting? If it's not exciting, that's not good enough. Where is the feeling of excitement? I'm looking for that. And this is because we have this confusion in our culture. We equate the words excitement and arousal. These are overlapping concepts. And to me, they're actually very different. Arousal is sexual uh, awakening. It's sexual aliveness in your body of sexual energy. You can have incredibly deep arousal just through sexual energy expanding in your body, feeling sexual without that feeling of mental excitement in your head. You can have essentially arousal without excitement. And excitement is a stimulation, a mental stimulation of some sort that then, you know, also in, uh, creates sexual uh, arousal. So we have muddled these two ideas in our culture and uh, a lot of people feel anxious and helpless as if, you know, unless you excite your mind with something exciting, you're not going to get aroused at all and therefore you can't have sex at all. So there is a, a dependence on that and an anxiety about it. And this can be true for a lot of people because we just have all our foreplay technique, all our arousal technique is based on that excitement erroneously in our whole culture. And I've even seen this in quite a few of my clients uh, when we start working with them that they have got so used to um, looking for excitement in sex, they have lost the ability 
to feel are the feelings in sex, to feel loving touch and nurturing touch and to feel connected touch and beautiful touch in some way. If it's not exciting, they just don't feel anything. There's a numbness there. And that's obviously a limitation because then you can't feel those things uh, in sex. You can't bring them into your life. And uh, they might be, you know, the most profound feelings for you to get out of sex in the first place. So here we come to just a question of technique. Yes, you are not going to be able to feel the whole kind of expansive nourishing quality of sex by using this technique for foreplay, for arousal that we are using in our culture to just stimulate ourselves with something exciting. That's not going to work. This is a tool that's not suitable for this. So we need to learn and use different techniques for arousal, the techniques that are not based on exciting your mind with something flashy, something novel, but the techniques that are based on feeling each other, creating sexual sensation in that moment, generating it, really tuning into it and letting that sexual energy expand and unfold in your body. And it can be a really profound, incredibly rich arousal, real sexual feeling without the feeling of excitement. There are actually uh, a variety of patterns that we can do that in. And um, I teach them all in my courses. And it's worth noting that in our culture, we do not have a lot of techniques for arousal, for foreplay. We are so obsessed with orgasms and everything is about making each other come that this area of sex, uh, how to get aroused, is so underdeveloped. So our technique for foreplay is so ineffective. It needs to be taken out and picked up by local council and taken to the tip. And we need to completely get a new technique in the house. And because the technique is so ineffective, we are so reliant on that feeling of excitement uh, because we can't function without it essentially so this is all learnable and there's a bunch of really good techniques to learn uh, there and uh, different patterns of arousal for different energies and you can absolutely totally get aroused really well without having to stimulate yourself with excitement that is all learnable in fact if you want a short course you can have a look at my website i have a free short course there uh, that will teach you a bunch of techniques how to tune into that moment of uh, sexual sensation and listen more for that nourishing quality and get more aroused, more alive from it. So uh, that's on my website, lovefloweducation.com. You can uh, download it there for free. So it's going to be initially a process of restructuring, of uh, letting go of this habit that normally kicks in to look for something exciting and feel anxious when you're not excited. To teach yourself to listen to that nourishing quality uh, of that sexual feeling right now, how beautiful it is, how happy it is, how nourishing it is. But once you complete that restructuring, you will be a completely different sexual person who is able to feel sex on such a different level. Whole new worlds will open for you and you will find the sex that really matters to you, the sex that you really need in your life, the sex that will have true power in your life. So it's really, really worth it. Stick with it for a little bit. That's it for today and until next time.